In this video lesson, we're going to take a look at a few ways you can get down to the note editing level for MIDI in Pro Tools. Here I've got three instrument tracks in my edit window, and to be specific, three stereo instrument tracks in my edit window. On each of the tracks, I have a virtual instrument that comes stock with Pro Tools. For my keys, I have expand. For my bass, I have vacuum. For my drums, I have boom. Let me close my mix window there. And let's hit spacebar and see what we've got. Okay, so if I want to get down to the note view level here in Pro Tools to edit MIDI notes, let's do so on the bass track and let's change from clips to notes view. Now that I'm in notes view, I can use my grabber tool or any one of the tools to select, trim, delete, alter notes in any way that's possible doing so with MIDI notes. Okay, so let's go ahead here, drag the note up and down, left and right. We can change to the trimmer tool, make it longer or shorter. We can use the grabber tool to select all the notes in the track. We can use the trimmer tool to select all the notes in the track. So we'll go through all the editing options in another video lesson. But right now, just going to the different views and how to actually get at notes in the note level. Uh, so using the scroll here, we can also zoom in and out vertically here with the MIDI zoom. So let's zoom fatter, skinnier right there, there we go. And that is available as a keyboard shortcut, so command shift right bracket to make the notes fatter, command shift left bracket to make the notes a little skinnier like that to get more notes into view. All right. So the other thing we can do here in the edit window is to edit the other component of a note on message, and that is to edit the velocity. So let's go right here to our automation lanes and show the velocity lane right there. So if I click on this note, it highlights the velocity stick, and I can adjust that velocity stick up or down to adjust the individual volume of that note. So let's go ahead and click, and I'll drag down. The highest number is 127. The lowest number is 1. And you'll notice how the shading of the note has changed from a dark blue to a light blue, kind of a medium blue, and back to the dark blue as we get higher in velocity levels. So let's go ahead and hide our velocity lane and change back to clips view. Another way to edit notes in Pro Tools is using the MIDI editor. So I can bring up the MIDI editor simply by double clicking on any one of the clips in any one of the tracks. So double click there, and that brings up the MIDI editor. And since I clicked on the keys track, it brought up the keys notes for me. Put a little pencil next to it to let me know that those are the notes that you'll be editing. And I can do the same editing operations that were available in the edit window. Dragging notes up, down, left, right, and any of the other event operations available for MIDI editing in Pro Tools that were available in the edit window are available here. Okay. All right, also, just like we saw in the edit window, I've got individual velocities to control the loudness of each note. Same there. And you can see how it change, changes shading, as I did in the edit window as well. If I want to see more than one track or change tracks, I'll just hide that, show that. And since that's the only track I have visible, Pro Tools automatically assumes that that's the track you want to edit and puts the pencil tool next to it to let you know that's what you are editing. Okay. All right. Let's go to our drums track and let's bring both these up together. Now we can see both of them, but you can see that you right now Pro Tools says, well, you're editing the bass track. Well, if I click a note in the drum track, it tells me or updates here in my tracks list, you just, you've just started editing the drums. So if I'm not sure which notes are which, Pro Tools automatically tells me, hey, you're editing this instrument, or hey, you're editing this instrument, whatever it's going to be. Another nice way of keeping track of it, so let me bring up all three here, is to bring up the color bar right here. <clears throat> so when I click on this, Pro Tools is going to assign colors, blue, red, and green, to the notes in each one of the tracks. And it also does it here in the velocity window, so I can keep track of all the individual MIDI velocities on a color-coded basis as well, which is really nice. 
If I just want to look at relative velocities, let me change that, and now I'll change to the red shading here. It changes all the tracks red, and really the only thing that I have found this good for is to see if there are any outliers that you might have with low velocities that you want to touch up. So I can see, oh, there's one shaded a little bit lighter red, etc. I'll put another one down here. That one's shaded a very light red there. So uh, I haven't found a big use for this color coding yet, but I found that this one is really quite helpful. The other color coding option you can bring into the mix here is the color coding of your track. So let me go back to the edit window here and I'll click right where it says track color. And there we go. Double click brings up my color bar. And I'll change this one to a green, change this one here to a yellow, and change this one here to a purple. Okay. Now let me go back to my MIDI editor. And there we go. And now you can see for my keys track, because I clicked on it, that's the green one, so it brings up the green, corresponding green color there. Let's go to bass. You can see now I've got the yellow bar there. And I'll go to drums, and you can see that I've got the purple bar there. So that's how Pro Tools handles the color coding with the actual track color. But in the notes itself, the color of the notes does not relate to the color of the track. Let's see what other options are available in the MIDI editor. Uh, if we head over to the top left here, any of the tracks can be record enabled, soloed or muted. So if I scoot this over here and I look at the drum track, which I have enabled right there, I'll go ahead and record enable it, or I can solo it, or I can mute the track. So I'm able to do anything that I could do in the edit window with recording, editing, and soloing right here in the MIDI editor as well. All right. If I want to take a look at yet another way to edit MIDI notes, I can click here where it says Notation Editor. All right, And there I can grab any one of the notes and change it there in Notation View as well. So let's close that. Here are the MIDI Zoom tool. I've got Normal Zoom and Single Zoom. With Normal Zoom, the tool remains selected even after I use it. And I'll use Command Left Bracket to zoom back out. Command left bracket, okay. If I do single zoom, it's one zoom and then the tool reverts to back back to my previously selected tool, which was the grabber tool. Again, I'll do a command left bracket to zoom back out horizontally there. For vertical zoom, same as using the MIDI editor in the edit window. Command shift right bracket, command shift left bracket, okay, to make the notes vertically bigger or smaller. All right. Over here, your uh, tool complement, trimmer, selector, grabber. The scrubber tool So you just want to scrub across a region of MIDI notes and check those out. That's what you've got there. Your pencil tool here, if you want to enter notes using the pencil tool, here it tells you the track that you're currently working on. Of course, corresponds to your note right there. Here, it tells you the value of the note you'll be entering, your note duration, and right now, it corresponds to your grid, which is a 16th note. If you want to change that, you can change it to 8th note, quarter note, whatever you would want. This number here, 80, goes all the way down to 1 and all the way up to 127, and that's the MIDI velocity level with which you enter each note. This here is the speaker tool which plays the MIDI notes as you are entering them. So let's just use the pencil tool and put in a few notes here. I'm going to command right bracket, okay? And I'll just add a few bass notes really quickly. So right down here. Okay, let's check that out. And we can solo that track. All right, so anyway, use the pencil tool right here in the MIDI editor window. This is our MIDI monitor here when we're doing editing, and if you notice, I'll go ahead and grab a note here. When I click and move, it plays. If I disable this, now when I'm editing notes, it will not make any sound. Typically, it's a good idea to leave that enabled. All right. Next, let's visit right here. This is mirrored MIDI editing, and we'll come back to that 
when we get to more advanced MIDI editing. Next to that is Link, Edit, and Timeline, which is just a good one to keep on usually most of the time. But there are times where you want to turn it off. Let's just get a clear understanding of what it is. Notice here, with Link, Edit, and Timeline enabled, when I click in the MIDI editor or in the edit window, it updates the location of the playhead or where play is going to start. Now you can see that I've located the playhead at measure 2 beat 1. If I deselect that, now when I update my edit location, it does not update the play location. All right, so generally speaking, you'll have that enabled for the majority of your work in Pro Tools. Next, shuffle, slip, grid, and spot. Those are covered in detail in a separate video. Right here, it shows the location of my cursor in Pro Tools. Right here, it shows the location of my cursor in Pro Tools, so left and right in the timeline, or up and down in the note list. Here is show and hide grid lines. So even though they're hidden, they are still there because we are in grid mode. And this is the current grid value, eighth note, quarter note, sixteenth, whatever it's going to be. And right here, if I tap on my MIDI keyboard, it tells me that my keyboard is active and what note I am playing. So that covers the basics of the MIDI editor and the basics of MIDI editing in the edit window in Pro Tools.